Hello guys. Welcome to my channel. Hope you like it and enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. Ethiopia Somalia 1977 War was a military conflict fought between Somalia and Ethiopia from July 1977 to March 1978 over the Ethiopian region of Ogadene. The conflict began with the Somali invasion of Ethiopia. The Soviet Union disapproved of the invasion and ceased its support of Somalia, instead starting to support Ethiopia. Ethiopia was saved from defeat and permanent loss of territory through a massive airlift of military supplies worth $1 billion, the arrival of more than 12,000 Cuban soldiers and airmen sent by Fidel Castro to win a second African victory, after his first success in Angola in 1975-76, and 1,500 Soviet advisors, led by General Vasily Petrov. On January 23, 1978, Cuban armored brigades inflicted the worst losses the Somali forces had ever taken in a single action since the start of the war. The Ethiopians and Cubans, using 300 tanks, 156 pieces of artillery, and 46 combat aircraft, prevailed at Harar, Dair Dawa and Jijiga and began to push the Somalis systematically out of the Ogadene. By March 23, 1978, the Ethiopians and Cubans had recaptured more than two-thirds of the Ogadene, marking the official end of the war. A third of the Somali National Army was killed, and half of the Somali Air Force destroyed. The war left Somalia with a disorganized and demoralized army, and an angry population. All of these conditions led to a revolt in the army which eventually spiraled into a civil war. In 1977 Ethiopia and Somalia engaged in a brief territory conflict over the Ogadene region situated between, between and claimed by both nations. This conflict however held significance greater than most territorial disputes because Ethiopia was backed by the Soviet Union and Somalia was supported by the United States, thus bringing the Cold War to Eastern Africa. Long before the 1977 conflict, the Ogadene had been subject to dispute. Following World War II, when Ethiopia had been aligned with the Allies against the Axis powers, Great Britain relinquished its claim on the Hod and Ogadene regions as part of British Somaliland. When British Somaliland became part of the newly independent nation of Somalia in 1960, that government took control over the region. They intensified their control when a military coup led to the assassination of Somali President Abdirashid Ali Shermark and the army's seizure of control of the nation in 1969. Meanwhile in Ethiopia, longtime Emperor Haile Selassie was overthrown in September of 1974 by the military council known as the Derg. The nation was in disarray as a result, and numerous separatist movements opposed to the Derg emerged out of the political uncertainty. One of those groups, the Western Somali Liberation Front WSLF, made up of Somalis living in the Ogadene region of Ethiopia, called for the annexation of the area they controlled to Somalia. By 1977 Mengistu Haile Mariam had become the leader of the Derg which now controlled all of Ethiopia. The Derg violently suppressed all Ethiopians, and in particular the WSLF, and its supporters. By this point, they had declared Ethiopia a Marxist state and allied it with the Soviet Union. The Somali government, which had previously received considerable amounts of Soviet aid, now provided weapons and supplies to the WSLF. In July 1977, the Somali National Army of 35,000, led by Mohamed Syed Bar and aided by 15,000 15, WSLF militiamen, invaded Ethiopia's Ogadene region. The Somalian army was greatly outnumbered by the Ethiopian military, but they had superior artillery and air force because of earlier Soviet military aid. When the conflict began in July 1977, Ethiopia controlled approximately 10% of the Ogadene region. With greater and more consistent Soviet aid however, they drove back the Somali army and its WSLF allies. In October, the Somalis attempted their most significant offensive to capture the Ethiopian city of Harar. Here they faced 40,000 Ethiopian troops and 11,000 Cuban troops, backed by Soviet artillery and air power. The Ethiopians prevailed at Harar and began to push the Somalis out of the Ogaden systematically. By March 1978, the Ethiopians had captured almost all of the Ogaden, 
prompting the defeated Somalis to give up their claim to the region. Following World War II, Britain retained control of both British Somaliland and Italian Somaliland as protectorates. In 1950, as a result of the Paris Peace Treaties, the United Nations granted Italy trusteeship of Italian Somaliland, but only under close supervision and on the condition first proposed by the Somali Youth League (SYL) and other nascent Somali political organizations such as Hizbiya Digital Miraful Somali (HDMS) and the Somali National League (SNL) that Somalia achieve independence within 10 years. British Somaliland remained a protectorate of Britain until 1960. In 1948, under pressure from their World War II allies and to the dismay of the Somalis, the British returned the Had, an important Somali grazing area that was presumably protected by British treaties with the Somalis in 1884 and 1886, and the Ogaden to Ethiopia, based on a treaty they signed in 1897 in which the British, French and Italians agreed upon the territorial boundaries of the Ethiopian Empire with Emperor Menelik II in exchange for his help against raids by hostile clans. Britain included the provision that the Somali residents would retain their autonomy, but Ethiopia immediately claimed sovereignty over the area. This prompted an unsuccessful bid by Britain in 1956 to buy back the Somali lands it had turned over. Britain also granted administration of the almost exclusively Somali-inhabited Northern Frontier District NFD, to Kenyan nationalists despite an informal plebiscite demonstrating the overwhelming desire of the region's population to join the newly formed Somali Republic. A referendum was held in neighboring Djibouti, then known as French Somaliland, in 1958, on the eve of Somalia's independence in 1960, to decide whether or not to join the Somali Republic or to remain with France. The referendum turned out in favor of a continued association with France, largely due to a combined yes vote by the sizable Afar ethnic group and resident Europeans. There was also widespread vote rigging, with the French expelling thousands of Somalis before the referendum reached the polls. The Somali Air Force was mainly formed in the Soviet manner, with the officer corps being trained in the USSR. Effects of the war The executing of civilians and refugees troops was prevalent throughout the war. A large Cuban contingent remained in Ethiopia after the war to protect the socialist government. government. Assisted by Soviet advisors, the Cuban contingent launched a second offensive in December 1979 directed at the population's means of survival, including the poisoning and destruction of wells and the killing of cattle herds. Following the withdrawal of the SNA, the WSLF continued their insurgency. By May 1980, the rebels, with the assistance of a small number of SNA soldiers who continued to help the guerrilla war, controlled a substantial region of the Ogaden. However, by 1981 the insurgents were reduced to sporadic hit-and-run attacks, and were finally defeated. In addition, the WSLF and SALF were significantly weakened after the Ogaden War. The former was practically defunct by the late 1980s, with its splinter group, the Ogaden National Liberation Front ONLF, operating from headquarters in Kuwait. Even though elements of the ONLF would later manage to slip back into the Ogaden, their actions had little impact. For the Bar regime, the invasion was perhaps the greatest strategic blunder since independence, and it weakened the military. Almost one-third of the regular SNA soldiers, three-eighths of the armored units and half of the Somali Air Force SAF, were lost. The weakness of the Bar administration led it to effectively abandon the dream of a unified Greater Somalia. The failure of the war aggravated discontent with the Bar regime, the first organized opposition group, the Somali Salvation Democratic Front SSDF, was formed by army officers in 1979. The United States adopted Somalia as a Cold War ally from the late 1970s to 1988 in exchange for use of Somali bases, bases and a way to exert influence upon the region. A second armed clash in 1988 was resolved when the two countries agreed to withdraw their militaries from the border. A new constitution was promulgated in 1979 under which elections for a people's assembly were held. However, Bar's Somali Revolutionary Socialist Party Politburo continued to rule. In October 1980, the SRSP was disbanded, and the Supreme Revolutionary Council was re-established in its place. By that time, Bar's government had become increasingly unpopular. 
many Somalis had become disillusioned with life under military dictatorship. The regime was weakened further in the 1980s as the Cold War drew to a close and Somalia's strategic importance was diminished. The greatest single victory of the SNAWSLF was the assault on Jijiga in mid-September, in which the demoralized Ethiopian troops withdrew from the town. The local defenders were no match for the assaulting Somalis and the Ethiopian military was forced to withdraw past the strategic strongpoint of the Marta Pass, halfway between Jijiga and Harar. By September Ethiopia was forced to admit that it controlled only about 10% of the Ogaden, and that the Ethiopian defenders had been pushed back into the non-Somali areas of Haraj, Bale, and Sidamo. However, the Somalis were unable to press their advantage because of the high attrition on its tank battalions, constant Ethiopian air attacks on their supply lines, and the onset of the rainy season which made the dirt roads unusable. During that time, the Ethiopian government managed to raise and train a giant militia force 100,000 strong and integrated it into the regular fighting force. Also, since the Ethiopian army was a client of U.S. weapons, hasty acclimatization to the new Warsaw Pact bloc weaponry took place. Throughout the war there were sharp tensions between the SNA and WSLF forces. The WSLF resented the fact that Somali political commissars insisted on Somalia's direct control over conquered territory. Particularly bothersome for the WSLF were incidents where Somali officials would tear down WSLF battle flags over conquered areas and replace them instead with the flag of Somalia. From October 1977 until January 1978, the SNAWSLF forces attempted to capture Harar during the Battle of Harar, where 40,000 Ethiopians had regrouped and rearmed with Soviet-supplied artillery and armor, backed by 1,500 Soviet advisors and 16,000 Cuban soldiers, they engaged the attackers in vicious fighting. Though the Somali forces reached the city outskirts by November, they were too exhausted to take the city, and eventually had to withdraw to await the Ethiopian counterattack. Casualties among the Somalis may have totaled as many as 40,000 since the start of the war. Thanks for watching please subscribe my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more history.